It is uh, great to be here with you today. I'm going to spend a little time talking about UPS's data strategy. I'm going to mention a few things about how we use IoT. I'm really glad that you're spending some time going through this today, because obviously what we get from IoT today has truly transformed UPS, and I expect it to continue to transform our company for many years to come. Now, when you look at the title up here, it says IoT Enabling Business Decisions at UPS. It's not an understatement. It's truly happening today. In fact, as I speak this morning with you, we're using IoT to run UPS. And I feel confident that the data insights that we get from all the devices that we have connected today are making UPS better and will continue to make UPS better. Now, one thing that I need to ask you is that as we go through this presentation this morning, I want you to think about just a few questions that we've asked ourselves time and time again. The first one is, what good does IoT do for UPS without having analytics behind it? Apply that to your own companies. And the second one is, once you have that data, rich data, how are your organizations taking advantage of it to improve business value? Ultimately, those are two key questions that we've asked ourselves time and time again as we've matured in our data analytics practice as well as with our IoT strategy. Now, I'm the CIO of UPS. I'm also the Chief Engineering Officer. And what I've been able to do in those two roles is been able to merge the importance of data on both ends, IT and engineering to make UPS better. And you'll see how we do that. But first, let me tell you what our IoT formula is. And I'll repeat this twice in this presentation. The first one, I think we all recognize that IoT is data. But very importantly, data minus analytics is just simply trivia. And I get really, really worried when I hear business units time and time again wanting more and more data in the organization without having a solid strategy as to how that data is going to make better business decisions, help us make better business decisions at UPS. Of course, trivia can cost UPS lots of money, ultimately without the type of value that we want to generate from it. However, data plus insight helps with decisions. And that's truly where we're going as an organization. Now, I can't really say what's there on the screen. But many years ago, in 2010, in Iceland, there was a major volcano eruption, one of the biggest ones that uh, that particular area of the world had seen. In fact, the airspace had not been constrained more since World War II. And of course, that volcano had all to do with it. That volcano generated a significant amount of activity in that particular area. In fact, the amount of activity, seismic activity, was 10 to 20 times more than what the original scientists were predicting it was going to be. And what it caused was just over 100,000 flights being delayed or impacted. What it also did is it created a significant amount of challenges for airlines, cargo companies, to be able to move across that particular area. In essence, it brought that particular part of the world to a standstill, could not move things. But here's what happened at UPS. UPS was back up and running in one day. How do we accomplish that? Through data and through insights and through connecting many, many things across our entire network. We connect so many things that quickly we were able to get our airline up and running. And of course, whatever couldn't fly in, in that area, we took advantage of all of our ground movements and other types of movements in that geography to quickly restore service to our customers. And I say this today, this is back in 2010. Today, with the advances in technology and the capabilities that we've built, once again, through the use of data, we could actually respond even more quickly than what we did then to an event of this type. But of course, the key here was that we had access to the data. We also had the ability to generate the appropriate insights to help our company get back in service. Now, let's talk about UPS just for a few minutes. I think you'll find this interesting. Uh, when I ask the question to audiences like this, what do you think about when you think UPS? Usually this is what you think about. The brown trucks that are making deliveries all over the world. You think about the great UPS drivers, which by the way, I was a UPS driver at one point in my career. I was a UPS driver in Beverly Hills, California, 90210. Don't hold that against me. Had a great time being a UPS driver. But it truly showed me what UPSers do every single day in support of our customers. And of course, you think about packages. You think about lots of packages. 
UPS has changed significantly in the last several years. In fact, we're no longer a small package delivery company alone. We're, yes, definitely the largest package delivery company in the world, but we're also a logistics company. We're also an insurance company. We provide all kinds of freight transportation across multiple modes, and we continue to gather data on all aspects of our business to keep generating insights that can help UPS run better. So today, we're a very different company than what we were many years ago. In total, we have over 454,000 employees around the world. We provide services in over 220 countries and territories. In any given day, we'll dispatch over 100,000 vehicles around the world. We're one of the largest airlines in the world, over 500 airplanes. And in any given day, we'll deliver more than 20 million packages. Now, that number is a little misleading. That's what we deliver on any given day. But when we get to our peak period, that number changes significantly. In fact, during peak season last year, we were delivering here in the U.S. alone close to 34 million packages in a day. It brings a really interesting problem because you have to scale quickly. You have to scale in a way that you can still remain competitive. Your costs need to be managed. You also need to be able to scale in a way that you can continue to provide good service to our customers and ultimately do it just for a very short amount of time. We do that today effectively as a result of how we use data in UPS, how we manage information and how we take that information to improve the way that the company runs. Once again, data that comes from multiple sources, creating business value for the company. But the journey to get here has been difficult. In fact, uh, you know, only a few years back, we were mostly a paper-based company. Uh, we, in 1989, 1990, when I was a UPS driver, introduced our first handheld device for completing deliveries. It truly transformed the organization. In fact, when I speak about digital transformations, I always go back to those days in which I went from having all of our delivery records on paper to being digitized by that handheld device, which at the time, by the way, was the size of a big clipboard. It was really good to keep dogs away. Now, today, the story is completely different. It continues to change, again, through technologies that advance rapidly, but also through the way that we use data. And today, I would make the argument, just like any company that's represented here today, Today, UPS is truly a technology company that happens to be in the logistics business. We deliver packages, but we are a technology company. So keep that in mind, because that mindset has truly changed the way we do business at UPS. And I say to, to, to folks inside the company time and time again, not one project in the company these days that is of significance to the company has, has, uh, you know, doesn't have a, a technology aspect to it. It continues to be that way. Now, we've created what we call the UPS network of things. We have smart vehicles that are collecting an incredible amount of data constantly. Every moment of the day, we're collecting data on everything that happens in those UPS brown trucks. We call them package cars at UPS. On anything that's going on with the vehicle itself, but also what the drivers are doing within that vehicle. We do that also through smart handhelds. That handheld device that I mentioned to you from a few years back has matured significantly. We're now working on our new generation device, but it's helping us collect a significant amount of data on how drivers are completing the work, on what our customers are asking for, the types of products and services that are meaning the most to our customers, location of our drivers, activities that our drivers perform, and of course, a lot of data around the safety of our drivers. And of course, we have smart labels. One of the most ambitious IoT projects that we've embarked on recently is the notion of having IoT devices connected to packages. We'll call, we call it the Smart Package Initiative at UPS. And it's truly going to transform again, not just how we do business day in and day out, but also how we provide products and services to you, our UPS consumers. Now, at the end of the day, all these devices, all these connected devices that we have at UPS collect a significant amount of data, but raw data is just useless. It doesn't mean anything to us. So what we've had to do to truly, truly extract value from our IoT strategy and from our data strategy is to really get very, very effective at analytics. I don't have to tell this audience, but this is just one definition of analytics. It's really taking raw data 
and making that raw data be converted into insight so that we can make better decisions. And we live by this day in and day out. And of course, we've had to go through a journey in analytics like most companies do. Going from descriptive analytics to predictive to prescriptive, and today, amongst the organization, especially in my areas of responsibility, engineering, and also on the IT side, we're spending a significant amount of time and effort really building our prescript prescriptive analytics practice. Let's talk about these three areas. The first one is descriptive analytics. The output is really basic, just simply data. The focus is in the past. And in essence, the only question that it's being asked is what happened yesterday. And you hope that by asking that question, if tomorrow is very much like yesterday, you will be able to make some better decisions and do things differently. Really, if tomorrow is just like yesterday, yeah, you'll be OK. But if it's not, then you will not be able to make any better decisions. Then you move into predictive analytics. And again, think about all this data that UPS is collecting today. That data has migrated from being descriptive to now being predictive. Of course, in the case of predictive, the output is significantly more insight. You really focus on the present. And the questions that you ask is, are, for example, why did this happen? Will it happen again? What will happen if these types of conditions materialize once again? Now, unless tomorrow is just like today, since we're now focused on the present, you really can't fix anything. So ultimately, as you build your data strategy connected to IoT, where we want to be is in the world of prescriptive analytics. The output is now allowing us to make really effective decisions and take action on the way we do work. The focus is not only on the present, but also on the future. The question that needs to be asked, which is really important, is what should I do next? And quite frankly, there hasn't been a downside to UPS in focusing on prescriptive analytics. In fact, one of the, the, the best examples I can give you is what we've done with optimizing our delivery routes every single day. Before UPS drivers leave their facilities, they actually get on their handheld device a manifest with all the stops they need to complete, complete for the day in stop-for-stop -stop order in an optimized way, minimizing the number of miles that the drivers drive, and of course, making sure that we make all of our service commitments. Sounds simple, but the amount of data that needs to be managed to be able to create those routes is significant. But yet, that type of technology is saving UPS in excess of $400 million a year, and we wouldn't go back, quite frankly. It's an example of taking connected devices, the data that comes from all those devices, and transitioning all that into what we call, of course, Orion and business value. Just looking at a picture that puts it all together, and again, another key takeaway for us, we have descriptive analytics focusing on what happened, predictive anal anal analytics that describes why did things happen, what will happen next, and of course, ultimately, prescriptive analytics that helps us tell our people what should they do next. We're focused in that area. To get there, IoT has played a significant role. Our vehicles, we call them smart vehicles. Why? Because those vehicles collect an enormous amount of data, maintenance-related data, engine data, performance data, we have sensors around the entire vehicle that even tell us when a UPS driver is driving that vehicle with the bulkhead door open. And you may ask, well, why does that matter? We don't want those doors open because it's easy for a package to leave that bulkhead or cargo area and hurt someone, hurt the driver, create an accident. So it's really important for us that from a methods perspective, that our drivers are following those methods from a safety standpoint. So collecting data on all those different parts of the vehicle is extremely important to UPS. You can imagine the amount of data we're collecting just simply with that one piece of information to improve our safety. We also use that data to improve our service. And of course, at the end, we transition all that data into value. We've improved the way that we manage our vehicles in the company. In fact, we have best-in-class what we called cars per, per road call, meaning the numbers of days that we actually run without having any type of significant maintenance issue. We've also used that data to improve our overall dispatch through vehicle location, and of course, improving our overall driver activities. So in the end, we collect data on locations. We collect data on packages, on our vehicles, 
on the conditions in which we're making deliveries every single day, and of course also on our customers, so that we ultimately can turn all those data points into value again by creating new products and services in support of UPS and in support of our customers. And ultimately, remember the key here is data plus insight ultimately creates value. So we want to know where the packages are, where those packages should be. We want to know where those packages are in the network so that we can react to unexpected conditions. We want to know where our vehicles are located so that we can better dispatch our service providers. We want to know what the vehicles are doing, what condition those vehicles are in, and ultimately translate all this into value again by determining what our customers truly want. And, of course, we want to be able to make informed decisions. We want to be able to have this data that comes from all these devices to improve our efficiency, to optimize our sustainability efforts, and ultimately to transform service. This one slide here has truly become our guiding principles as to how we apply analytics and data across the organization. Key message for us at UPS. And we've also learned that if you're going to be in the business of logistics, today more than ever before, by the way, you need to really drive for efficiency. You really need to drive for efficacy or efficiency and effect effectiveness. At the end of the day, all this happens only through data. And this is what's really created this commitment within the organization, which is another key takeaway. There has to be commitment to these practices. It's created that commitment that we will continue to gather data and derive insights from the data that we get. And this is why we are detailed-oriented. I want you to think about these numbers here. If we save one mile per driver per day in the course of a year across all of our drivers in the U.S., UPS can save $50 million, just one mile. If we actually can reduce one minute in our driver's day associated with work that it's non-value added for you, our customers, or for us as a company, we can save across all drivers in the course of a year $14.6 million. And if we can actually reduce one minute of idle time, we can reduce $515,000 in a year. Details matter. So as you develop your data strategy and your IoT strategy, ensure that you remain detailed-oriented. Of course, we continue to support different types of initiatives to become more sustainable and to provide better services to our customers. Smart cities is an important principle for UPS. We're working with a number of organizations in support of smart cities. The data that we collect from all of our connected devices is helping us be smarter in the way that we introduce new capabilities to support urbanization and to also engage with smart cities. This is one example on the screen here of what we've been able to do in a number of cities in the U.S. and now internationally by bringing our e-trike to actually bring a sustainable way of, of transporting and moving packages across smart cities. And of course, we're willing to make that information available to smart cities that we work with. Now, IoT, connecting our devices and managing data, has also changed the way that we provide service to our customers. A couple of years ago, we introduced UPS My Choice. We now have over 47 million subscribers in My Choice that are also constantly providing data to UPS so that we can be better at what we do. But in return, what we do is we give our customers just incredible capabilities in managing their own personal supply chains. So we can actually provide alerts on when packages are going to be arriving and also manage when you want those packages delivered and where you want those packages delivered. Without a data strategy, without commitment to analytics, we'd never be able to provide these types of capabilities. And the impact of data has been huge for UPS. I don't have to go through this slide here, but quickly tell you that without data, none of the stuff that I have here on this screen could have been realized up to this point. But what's even more exciting for us is that there more, there's more to come, more to give through a strong analytics, through a strong data and IoT strategy. So in IoT, we're still working on a number of projects to bring more sensors to everything. We really believe that sensor technology combined with data, combined with good insights, can continue to improve the way we run our business at UPS. And of course, and you're here for many of the reasons that I have here on this slide, we believe that data and IoT will continue to help improve our business in ways that we haven't even dreamed of. 
Artificial intelligence will have a huge impact in the way we provide services to you. We're experimenting with chatbots and a number of other technologies in that domain. Blockchain, we're bullish with that technology and what it can do in the way we manage our business. Autonomous build vehicles, robotics, virtual reality, and of course IoT are all, all key core projects associated with our data strategy at UPS to improve service and help us become more efficient. And we need to continue to design the, the future. We're very active in building our smart logistics network, which at the end of the day, you see that big cloud at the top that has the UPS logo? It's all about data. How can UPS, in its smart logistics network, utilize data to improve every decision we make to add flexibility to the network, make us more productive and effective, and ultimately provide better service to you, our consumers. So I'll wrap it up with this. This is our formula once again. IoT is data. But for us, data minus analytics is just simply trivia. Can't spend your time and effort on that. At the end of the day, good data with good insights provides incredible value through better decisions at UPS. So hopefully you take some of those key takeaways from our strategy and you apply them to your own companies. Thank you.